Hello and good afternoon to everyone. We're so excited you guys are here today um, to chat with us about motivation and feeling this fatigue that I think all of us are feeling right now um, during our remote learning crisis that we're just trying to control. Um, usually I just have the welcome, but um, below I also have our new link and it's a link tree um, that is kind of housing all of the professional growth and development links into one link um, because right now there's a lot of stuff that is out there. We've got the ties have web links, which are super great. They have all these quick links and webinars. Um, and we've got our remote learning tips and tricks page, which is great. And then you've got all of our social media. So you've got Instagram, um, Facebook and Twitter. Um, and now we have YouTube. Um, and then eventually, hopefully, We'll have a course catalog for fall. So I'm just trying to um, give you a one-stop shop to um, professional growth and development for Gilbert Public Schools. So if you haven't seen it on our um, Facebook page, I posted it, um, I think as an announcement last this earlier this week, um, but it's just right here below. It says Linktree uh, forward slash GPS PGD. And if you put that in right now, um, while we're kind of waiting for viewers to come in um, and you bookmark it, you'll see it's not fancy or anything, but you'll see all these different buttons um, show up and that will help you guys um, to be able to access us a little bit easier, I think, especially for office hours and um, WebEx meetings and our little mini professional uh, development things that we have going on. Uh, we have a pretty cute little catalog there of mini PDs. If you haven't checked it out, you should go look over there. Um, there's stuff on a digital jigsaw, mnemonic devices, um, how to use quotes in the classroom, how do you do justification statements with like rolling dice. So there's some um, pretty good things over there on the employee hub. But again, um, check out that link, type it in, bookmark it. Um, so it's right there for you if you're definitely one of those people that um, that do come to our, you know, our stuff a lot and you have a lot of different bookmarks for us. Um, I tried to consolidate that, that down. Um, so again, I see more people coming in as we start. So I'm super excited um, to talk to you guys today. Um, as we start, I thought this would be sort of a fun little thing to check out. And I don't know if you can copy and paste the link or not, um, but it is, what is your chronotype? And I think this is like an interesting way to think about what is our maximum productivity time and what are students' maximum productivity time. Can't I can't talk apparently today, which is not good for a live stream. Um, but if you're coming in and you're looking at the, the chat, Go ahead and copy paste that in and see which one you are as we wait for some um, viewers to come in. Um, and I will tell you right off the bat that I am a lion. I'm totally a lion. Um, I think that's why my schedule at work works so well for me because by the time I actually get going, it's 10 and I'm like ready to go with my cup of coffee. So it's kind of awesome. Um, so go ahead and, and, and comment on that if you can. Uh, today, I'm going to be joined by my one of my best friends and my colleague, Julia Salsi. Um, and she is going to be really just chatting with us about fatigue, motivation, and then feedback and how those things are all gonna kind of hopefully work together to get us through to the next three and a half weeks until we get to summer, which by the way, what are we gonna do during the summer? I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna bring Julia on. Julia, what are we gonna do during the summer? We don't know. I Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> idea. Normally, I'm looking forward to the summer, and I think I still am. But as I start to think about the summer, I feel like I've already tapped out all my activities for my kids. That's how um, I feel like I am, too. I'm like, OK, yeah. so I've done the pool. I've done um, the bounce house. I've done all of these like water tables and sand tables, like things that I normally kick off the summer with. And I feel like right now I've just I don't know. And how are we going to we always take them to the pools and the splash pads? I like, know. I know. If, Oh, it's going to be so bad if those are like, it makes me nervous. It makes me super nervous yeah. for the summer. Um, Julia, why don't you guys go, tell, go ahead and tell them what chronotype you were or how you were confused when you were looking at it. Yeah. So as I was taking the test, much like when I do like a colors testing, um, mm -hmm. I am just a little bit of each of them. So I might, I like to get up early, um, like the lion, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
but I am, but then I need to sit around and wake up and yeah. drink my coffee, which is a little bit more like the wolf, I think. Um, so I feel like I'm a mix between the lion, the wolf and the dolphin. Um, but I'm not surprised because I'm typically a mix of just about any of those personality style tests. Right. Yep. I know. I was looking at it and trying to think of, I feel like the high school kids are a lot of dolphins, right? They mm -hmm. wake up kind of later and they want to stay up on their technology. And then their productivity window is, <laughs> is a little bit smaller than the rest yes. of everybody else. Um, Arlene, really quick, how do we receive recertification credit for this webinar? Um, so this isn't a webinar, it's a live stream. Uh, if you're talking about the webinars that um, ties are putting out, the quick link webinars, there is actually a link at the bottom of the ties website. So there's a link that says certification. Um, you're going to click on that and that's going to give you the certification after you're done with a Thai webinar. So um, I don't know if you're in the right place or the wrong place, but I just wanted to make sure I clarified for you. Um, this is just a live stream chat for professional growth. If you are looking for the um, recertification uh, part of it, then you're going to want to go ahead and go to the quick links for the ties. Um, so looks like we've got some comments. Um, Megan is saying she's totally a wolf. Okay, so this is good. Um, and Wendy is like, well, I'm a bear, but I look forward to learning more. Um, and Vicki is a lion. Um, and she's so much better in the morning. So, and Suzanne's thinking, I think I'm a lion. Um, Vicky's also saying, <laughs> I think Julia's cup of coffee at two. She feels it a lot. Wolf. So I think she's calling you out now is what's happening. Um, I'm, married, I'm married to a lion. So See, I think it's part of it that. is like you're forced into other, um, <laughs> you're forced into being other things than you yeah. typically would. Um, so I'm going to share my screen right now with you guys. And so some of you that are coming in a little bit later and you're like, they're talking about lions and tigers and bears. No, that's actually not what we're talking about. So we are talking about one of the ways to maybe get your students um, a little bit more motivated. And that's knowing um, what their productivity time is their time frame so this website and obviously all of this will be available to you guys in the resource bank of our um, employee hub at the end is all the articles that we are re referencing today will be in there um but it look it's 50 to 55 percent of people are bears so apparently i'm just very average <laughs> i don't know um but bears sleep a lot but anyways it goes through so if you have time or this might be something fun to do with your students or have them look at it um you could probably reformat it because this is a little scary right here like i don't understand i couldn't get that to go off but maybe take all of these things and put it in a google doc it gives them like kind of like what would their ideal daily schedule be which i thought was kind of interesting and since a lot of us are struggling to even make schedules i think for our lives right now the internet just telling us when we're most productive might just be helpful um so i'm a bear and I, uh, my max productivity is 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., which is so true of me. Um, and I do anything that does a lot of energy and concentration, I do that first because I know I'll complete it faster. Um, and then I do get tired as lunchtime appro approaches. So then that's when um, it's so funny because Julia and I usually take a walk at work. Um, and that's about that time that we do that is we take a walk and get out into the sun. So that way, after lunch, we can be more productive. Um, it might be something to mention to your kids, okay? It's good for you to know when your pro your max productivity time is. Um, and then also I like at the end where it tells you when to turn off your gadgets. I feel like that's like something, like I need like somebody to come in and just take my phone at like 10 o'clock at night. She's like, nope, it's not yours anymore. You're done. Um, but I think, you know, this is a good way to see why maybe they're not getting on at a 9 a.m., web you know webex meeting if they're a high school kid and they're a dolphin and their productivity time doesn't start till 10 a.m they're not up yet they're not and even if they are up they might not be awake enough to process it okay um so i think that's one of the ways that we kind of wanted to um talk about motivation um and another way is just harnessing strategic procrastination okay so knowing that if you know your kids are likely to procrastinate an assignment, um, have some hard due dates. Um, you know, Cami had to do a litter bug for Earth Day this week or last week. And her um, she had to collect uh, materials, recyclable materials, and then create a bug out of them. 
and she made a fruit fly because we're inundated with fruit flies right now at my house, which I thought was funny. So she made a fruit fly. Um, but she had a hard due date where she had to, um, to video herself presenting it and putting it up onto Flipgrid for, um, like uh, at a certain time. And because of that time, even though it's not getting graded, I was like, oh, we got to get it done and get it up there because your teacher wants them all up on Flipgrid so we can all comment on all, everybody's bugs, litter bugs. Um, and she had to narrate what, what she made and why she made it, and what she made it out of. So I think have like, you got to be strategic with your with your students to keep them motivated. If you've got longer due dates um, for things, it it might actually they just forget to do them, um, especially with everything that's going on. What are your thoughts on that, Julia? Yeah, I mean, I think chunking out any mm -hmm. of those long assignments that's I think that's going to be the best thing for them. Um, I think remembering now too that students they're out in this this environment, they're not surrounded by learning per se as they are in the classroom. And so they're not gonna be naturally motivated to be ahead on certain deadlines. And so it's gonna fall on parents. So I think the more teachers can do to chunk stuff for them, give mm -hmm. them small incremental due dates, I think you're gonna find it's it's probably a lot better. And giving them feedback along the way on each of those chunks is gonna keep them motivated to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have this um, website that I'm going to link into um, our employee hub that shows um, kind of this test of are you a procrastinator or not? And it's just simple 15 statements to answer, but it gives them kind of um, overcoming procrastination help at the bottom. I don't know. I think most procrastinators know they're procrastinators. <laughs> But if a kid doesn't know it, they can take it. Um, but I thought this was really helpful in like trying to kick a self-sabotaging habit, like especially during this time when there are so many other things, I think, to distract us. Um, I was just telling Julia before we started and we were sitting in the studio, I was addicted to TikTok now and it's really bad. Um, there's other things that I'm like, oh, that's funny. And like I will literally start scrolling through that and it's like two hours later and I should be doing something else productive. So I think letting that like kind of helping them to see what's kind of distracting them will be helpful in the end um, to helping them keep their motivation. Um, and then I think walking and learning and getting out um, is helpful. Um, I get stuck if in a room for too long or on a screen for too long. I need to get out and walk and talk. Um, like we talked about earlier, Julia and I usually do a walk in the office if we're ever in the office together. And normally it's not about social stuff. It's about mm -hmm. work stuff. Like we come up with our best ideas sometimes, right? We can plan an entire class in one walk. Uh -huh. One walk. Yeah. And how long is our walk? She knows the mileage or whatever it is. Yeah, it's 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes and she has her steps in and she's... <laughs> <laughs> that I'll figure it out on her watch. And, um, you know, I used to have kids do that at school. So like I would give them a topic or something when I could see that they were getting um, distracted or tired or they're just sick of sitting down. And I would say, OK, let's go do a walk and talk. And they would just walk around my hallway um, and I'd give them that topic. They would partner up with a pair and they would just like go for a walk around the building. And then as they came back and I'd give them like a time frame and they would be like, OK, I like, you know, don't leave forever. But they come back and before they were able to enter my classroom, um, I would make sure they would debrief me on their walk and talk. And so they had to be talking about something, you know, um, that I told them to talk on. But I think also it's OK that they got off topic sometimes. Like it was kind of a nice little brain break. Um, and then they would come back refreshed, um, encouraging our students, I think, to take those breaks. Right. You, um, Julia talked last week. We talked about Julia's pause button, um, even incorporating that into the pause. So it's not even like during the lesson, right? Have a pause, but be like, okay, right now I want you to pause and take a brain break, like go for a walk and process what we're learning. Um, maybe talk into your phone or talk into a voice memo about what you just learned, or maybe listen to um, the lesson again, again, one more time. Like I know my, my daughter's stuff is all audio as far as like her math lessons are all audio compatible and so are her reading lessons. Um, I could easily put those on my phone and we, she could listen to them during a walk um, and instead of having to read the story in front of her screen again. Um, so that might also help just to motivate them to get 
out. I think a lot of them are like, are just kind of getting into a rut. And I think a rut is not helping our fatigue with the situation. What do you think, Julia? Yeah, I think, and I've noticed, I've noticed this just in at home as it's gotten hotter and I haven't been able to take my kids on as many walks or go around the block as, as much without just with the heat bearing down mm-hmm. on you. I've noticed that they're just so much more fidgety inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when we think about our, our students and their learning, they're sitting, and I think everybody's experiencing this now in, in, um, in our area that it's, it's getting hot. It's mm-hmm. unseasonably hot for us. Yep. Um, you're getting more boxed in if you didn't buy your pool before they all disappeared online. Yes. <laughs> struggling with outdoor things to do. Uh-huh. Um, so now we have to figure out, okay, now that they're trapped indoors even more, um, what types of things can we do? If they can't do an outdoor walk, can they mm-hmm. do um, just like a hallway walk? Like walk yep. your hallway, trace your fingers down the side, do something tangible, textile um, as you're thinking and, and feeling. But yeah, definitely getting them out and moving is 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 going to increase their learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I even, um, this week I posted, um, I don't know if I did it on my social media or not, but I have Cam's, uh, words on the wall basically and her spelling words and I have her close her eyes and she spells them. And if she gets it right, she gets to fly swat the word on the wall. Um, but if she, um, she only has three seconds to find it and fly swat it if she gets it right. And if she gets it wrong, then she has to go over, review it, you know, and and then we try to incorporate it again. But for whatever reason, she has more fun closing her eyes, trying to spell it, and then like looking around the hall, all around the hallway for the words so she could take the fly swatter and swat it. It's just that active movement that I think they, that they're missing. Um, But yeah, like you said, just anything tactile, going down the hallway, walking the house, um, uh, and then just trying to, I know it's getting, it's getting really warm too fast, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and then having them reflect on their learning. I think, you know, maybe have them reflect at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day somehow in your classroom. I think if they had to go on in the morning and say, today I'm feeling like this. And then at the end of the day, today, here's what I accomplished today. Mm-hmm. It might give them some more motivation to actually accomplish something. Um, I was talking to Wendy on the phone the other day and we both talked about how we feel like we're just floating in space. Like (laughs) there's no end to the day. There's no beginning of the day. It's just, everybody's having trouble sleeping. Everybody's having trouble. Like there's not that schedule. Um, I think even just having those two things for kids, Hey, post in the morning and post at night somewhere might motivate them to at least get on to do something. And I've noticed we um, just recently, and I don't know why I didn't think of it right off the bat, but I noticed um, my daughter was struggling to stay focused and really be motivated to do anything throughout the day. And so I implemented um, something similar to that, which is she has a goal setting form in the morning and she goes through her assignments and she maps out her to-do list and she sets her goal. She reflects at the end of the day, did she meet her goal? I can talk about her goal from the previous day as we go into the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I noticed she's just had a lot more buy-in because I think she feels like she has more control over her yeah. day. The school is such a controlled environment and they're so right. used to being controlled that they are probably feeling like they're floating in space, that same feeling. And so giving them something that they feel like they're controlling and can see, I think is really, is really helpful. Yeah. And we posted, yeah. this is Katie's schedule. We posted it um, on our Facebook and people were like, yes, you know, they need this. Um, and I, I think even, I like the whole five star idea too. You know, everyone's like, I like the five stars. Um, because it, it kind of helps them. It helps you as the parent too. How did that day go? Like, mm-hmm. I think yeah. we need to give them something they, they can do in the morning, you know, some fun in the day and then something that kind of ends their day. It's like an exit ticket, yeah. but for like <laughs> online motivation, you know, where we can figure out what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. Wendy said, um, her new PD that she's working on will be on our site tomorrow is on using reflection for learning. So that's something that, you know, you can check out, but I think this is a perfect example of like how Julia is helping Katie reflect on her learning. You know, she needed to see this, right? You said like it, yep. it needed she, needed to to she needed to see her day. She need I needed to see her day. So this is yeah. helpful, but it's been really good because we sit down side by side at the same time every morning now she pulled mm-hmm. up, so she's owning it way more. Cause prior to that, I was kind of scheduling it in. Okay. From this time to this time, you're going to do this. And this time to this time. Yeah. Um, and she was totally not, 
<laughs> she, couldn't, it, she couldn't keep it all in her head, right. you know. Yeah, and with, and with, yeah, well. with my daughter, she knows, um, you know, from 10 to, or from like nine to 12 is like when she's going to work with mom. And that mm -hmm. worked with her and she, and she, cause we have totally two different personality kits. Yep. So it's, you know what I mean? So my daughter's like, she sees me just setting up the stations and she's like, Oh, which one am I going to, you know, do first? And she's excited or whatever. And I'm like, this station's just a worksheet, but whatever it's a station, you know, mm -hmm. um, Julia talk to them about, um, idea. What is it? Creativity Island. Oh, I think that so, <clears throat> so one of the things is, um, so a lot of Katie's work has been, um, as kind of, it doesn't have to be in remote learning, but I mean, I, I think a lot of teachers have defaulted to some of that worksheet type work. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she was, or, or writing, writing, has writing. Been released, like yeah. tenfold for her than what she's been used to in the classroom, just because that's one of the easiest ways for them to complete a task and get it back to the teacher. And so I noticed she was just sitting for a really long time in the same spot. Um, so I just took her assignment and anything that she was brainstorming, I turned it into post-its or into envelopes. And so she would pack all her ideas in an envelope and then I would have her literally travel to yeah. Idea Island. Like this was, we need to go somewhere else. And so it was my coffee table in my living room. But I love her, that the coffee table was Idea yeah. Island. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the coffee table was Idea Island. And she, she was able to like lay it out. It was, it was at a different level. So it was like a flexible seating arrangement for her. She was kneeling now and moving and sorting things around. And so that's where she gathered all her ideas for her writing. And then she took her graphic organizer and filled them in. And then we went back. Then she went back to her, her actual workspace. And so I think that she really enjoyed that. Um, and it broke up kind of the monotony of being in that same working spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Cam like really likes to walk around and do stuff. So I think having them reflect on their learning, having them move more. Um, again, we're talking about our own kids here because we're parent teachers. But I think we're trying to just show, hey, we got to motivate ourselves too. like Julia had to motivate herself to make the schedule for Katie to help both of them. You know, I have to motivate myself to get Cam moving. My daughter's very hands on and um, she's definitely like a builder creator. So I have to look at her stuff and ahead of time and figure out how am I going to get this to work for her in that way. Um, and that motivates me as a as a teacher, as a person, as a mom to get up and, and do that kind of stuff. Um, so it's hard because we're getting tired. I even looked at the schedule and I was like, how many more weeks am I doing this? Like, this is what's happening? Um, but the scary thing is you know, what if we have flux of, fluxes of this next year? Like, what if we hit another spike and kids go to remote again? You know, um, I think we have to be ready for any reality, you know, and I think we've done a great job as a, as a district um, and, and just creating stuff out of no, nothing for our kids. But um, I think we definitely need to gather some, you um, help for them because right now they just see this as like a temporary thing but if it happens again and again for them throughout their school career until we figure this um like a vaccine out or something um we need to to have them so there was something on an article i'm going to talk about that said practicing mindful hyper focus and i was like what does that mean because <laughs> i feel like i'm always i always feel like hyper -focus. Hyper -focus. I have a hard enough time with focus. So. Yes. Well, and then mindful. I was like, what is, what is, oh, oh my gosh, Megan, 17 more days. Thank you. Cause I was like, how many more days do I have to do this? Oh my gosh. Ah, that's so funny. Um, <laughs> and then, okay. So mindful hyper-focus uh, is where you select an assignment activity, but then you set a timer for a stopping point. Okay. They can use an online timer if they're working on a laptop. You can set the kitchen timer, but they know that they're only doing this activity for this time. Now, I didn't think about this, but I've been doing this with Cam. She, We call it recess. So it's like, when, when's my next recess? Okay, well, after these two stations, you're going to have recess. And recess is just like, go play or watch TV or whatever. And then we're going to come back from our recess, and I actually time it, right? It's a 20-minute recess, and then she comes back and works. I guess apparently... <laughs> That's mindful hyperfocus, okay? Um, and then get all distractions, including smartphones, out of sight and out of mind. So I think that's more for the higher, the older kids. Um, I guess you need to hide all their, their stuff because otherwise they won't be able to hyperfocus into whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. But if they know in 20 minutes, they can go check their, you know, TikToks or Snapchats, they can hyperfocus into that. I think that mm -hmm. might help motivate them to get some of that work done um, instead of just being like, you know, whatever. 
and, and loosey goosey. Um, and then it says once they begin working, they should solely focus on that one activity or assignment and nothing else. Um, so that even means um, like nothing else on the table. And I'm really bad about that where I've got like different things all over the house because I'm like all excited for her to do all these things. Um, so this week I've been trying to just practice. OK, we are just doing this one thing right now put the timer on or, you know, for her, it works like, Hey, I have these three stations. Um, she's very excited about the station rotation model. Thank goodness we have that. Um, but she, after these three stations, you're going to do this, there's a timer and then you're going to have a recess and then you're going to come back, um, for high school students and middle school students. I think that would still work. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mindful hyper-focus. Mindful hyper-focus. Well, yeah. I mean, we use timers for lots of things to motivate kids, right? I mean, I remember setting a timer when my daughter just would like sit and not finish her dinner and she, yeah. ordered, but she didn't want to eat it. It was that yeah. she was just taking her time. So we would set a timer and, and my darn that, that meal was down in the five minutes left we gave her, gave right. her was the difference between dessert and, and not having it. Um, so I think the same thing works in learning. Absolutely. I've noticed it when I set a timer for her and, it, and it, it's visual for, for my daughter yeah. to just see it and she has to know the accountability of it. Um, and I find that the ticking is helpful for her because it keeps her attention on the fact that it like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing something right now. I can hear this. this right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. It's, it's knowing, it reminds me of interval training and exercise. Right? Yeah. You, uh -huh. you're, you know, I can do this for just as long and I'm, yeah. I'm about to my finishing point and breaking point and then, whoo, okay, now I'm going to do my slow walker in their I'm case. I'm pretty sure after. I wouldn't have done any sports in high school if I would have known like, hey, you're going to run for like five hours. Like, you know, nobody's going to do that. So right. yeah. I think it's totally like that. That's such a great analogy. Um, and the last thing was taking sensory breaks. And if you know anything about me at all, I am like all about the sensory learning and the sensory tables and Play-Doh trays and loose parts. Um, and what article I was looking at um, was like, it talked about um, like lighting and smells, which when we look up a Hattie, um, music isn't really that high, right, Julia? Like, yeah, yeah just putting on music without pairing it with anything else. So just, just by playing music in your classroom, if you're right. still just doing a worksheet, it's not gonna increase the learning. Right. Like you can pair music with higher level tasks and things, and it will produce more of, a, of an effect. Okay. So this, this article I thought was really, okay, hold on. It's telling me, it wants me to log in and I don't want to log in and I just want to show you the article. Um, Apparently it has timed out of its hyper focus. <laughs> right. Excuse me. It has. Okay. So sharing my screen with you guys really quickly, um, and this is obviously, this is also in our employee hub. Everything's downloaded as PDFs. So you guys can look at these articles, but um, nine tips for creating a sensory space at home on a budget. I think that's important because um, like I have really, I've taken the deep dive into sensory play at my house where like I am buying expensive um, toys. Don't tell my husband, like he kind of knows. Like remember the waveboard, Julia? That's like super expensive and everyone's like, why are you buying a piece of wood that's shaped like a rainbow? But I promise it works. Um, but I don't think that's really you know, practical for everybody. So we talked about music, but instead of installing like those expensive swings, where was this picture? Was it on this website? Well, I guess it wasn't. Um, there was this mom that maybe I saw it on Facebook. She tied a sheet around her kitchen table so that, that at the bottom of it was a hammock for the kids. So it was like a sensory, like a sensory swing underneath the kitchen table. And I was like, that's brilliant. You know, um, this week I had to, so you can get a child um, on an exercise ball in a rocking chair, um, mini trampolines, you know, are helpful if you have one of those. Um, but I thought that I would, I want to sit in that little swing under yeah. the kitchen table. Like I could use that for sure. Um, We've done a lot with furniture sliders. Mm -hmm. so furniture sliders, like she'll just like back and forth underneath her desk or she'll furniture slide around the, the carpet. And that's been a nice difference too. Oh, perfect. I love that. Yeah. And then lighting, you don't need high tech equipment, right? But um, warm, soft lighting can make us feel relaxed. Like we already know that just in the classroom that um, those really bright lights, a lot of students struggle with. And so if you have a sensory kiddo, um, just making sure that they're in an environment that 
especially because they're on a screen. And, and I was even thinking like the screen being dimmed. You know how like the iPhone now has like you can have like the black background, you know, just even dimming, I think some of their screens to a little bit less bright would help them, I think, sensory wise, if they're on them for a long period of time. Um, and then just having a variety of little things that they can play with. So like a Play-Doh ball or a clay or something they can roll around while they're working. Um, that might keep them a little bit more motivated to do stuff. Um, making visuals. Um, I will. I can't even tell you how many times we have brought Play-Doh to a, a staff meeting or a faculty meeting of some type and people are like, Play-Doh! And it's like super motivating for them. Um, I think, uh, you know, just having them make something out of it would be great. Um, also, when you give them those breaks, like I've been doing giant um, crash pads for my kids because I feel like they need to like jump and like put pressure on themselves and like run. And so we've been like, I've been that mom that's letting them like literally launch off chairs into a giant thing of pillows um, and just letting them push and pull and lift and do all those things that they normally are doing on the playground, mm -hmm. right? Or in PE or in their sports. Like all of these kids are missing out on these sports that they're used to like lifting, you know, in, in the weightlifting gym. Um, you know, I, I would love to see a giant football player crash into a big pad of pillows on the floor. I mean, my husband does it and he's six, four and he does it with the kiddos. So it can be done. Um, and then just like therapeutic scents, they said, like, even if you don't have essential oils, just even rubbing some scents um, on a cotton ball and just running it under their nose for a little bit, if they're having a trouble focusing can help. Um, and then a private little snuggle space. So kind of like a calming corner of your house. Um, I had to implement that this week because Julia, are the kids getting along? <laughs> Not always. No. So I was like, you need to go to the quiet corner, the calm down corner. So we have a calm down corner now and it's fine. Um, and then there's another thing about pressure and I can't find it in here and it might have been on one of the other websites I was on that I linked. Um, but what I, you know, a lot of kids need pressure. So that's why I think those weighted blankets are super popular. Um, put some pressure on them while they're working, like physical pressure. So if they've got a weighted blanket or even a couple blankets, um, I don't know if they have like a stuffed animal or something that they like or love that they could put on their lap or, or on in their chest. Um, a lot of times, you know, in the middle of Cam's breaks, I'll just go lay on her like, and just snuggle her. And I literally just lay on her, like, you know, not all my body weight, but enough to give her that pressure. Um, I think these are great tips to help them in those like recess moments, like really emotionally reset to go back into this homeschool world. Um, and so those were some things I thought might help motivate kids and give parents some ideas of what am I going to have? What can I have these kids do? That's, that's, not going to cost me a fortune, you know, on Amazon. I think everyone's on Amazon like, what? Like, Julia, where are all the pools? I know. <laughs> what happened to all the pools? I need a pool. What happened to all the pools? Yeah. So all that stuff is linked. Um, you know, I always do sensory play block boxes or sensory trays. So if anybody's like, "Woo, I like this idea, um, feel free. You can follow me on social media um, and you'll see a bunch of ideas there too, but they're all over Pinterest. I mean, if you just type in sensory play, you'll get a bunch of ideas and you don't need to buy a bunch of stuff for it either. So that was kind of, oh, Megan said, how cool, great are these tips for more parents? I feel like these would be great for families to hear. Yeah, that's why we're giving them to you. We're hoping that in maybe your newsletter or your WebEx meeting for like, you know, if you have a morning meeting or um, if you send out like, you know, Hey, t here's some tips this week when, you know, or even with your kids, if you're in the middle of teaching a lesson and you hit the pause button, say, okay, I want you to get these materials. And then I want you to see how fast you can run around the dining room. I don't know, you know, do something like inside the lesson, like build in the motivation to keep going, you know, build in those breaks, especially if they don't have those timers set for the, like the parents are working, you know, the parents don't have time to stop and set the timer. Um, maybe put a timer in your presentation, right? And say, okay, here's the time. We've got 15 minutes. You know, I'm going to, we're going to pick back up. I want you guys to go do some go noodle or I want you guys to do some stretching or something like that. Um, 
you know, do something sensory. Teachers could always put information out to parents and parents, um, parents are also welcome to obviously YouTube live. Um, and this video will be up too if they want those um, resources too. Yeah. We, well, I think and, too, we need to remember that whatever emotions we're feeling, the kids are feeling them tenfold. Yeah. Um, this is a unique experience for all of us. And mm -hmm. I know that we, like our family, we hit our wall last week and I was thinking, okay, we'd hit the wall and then we'd get over the wall. Um, mm -hmm. But guess what? The wall hasn't moved. Um, mm -hmm. We're still, we're still there. And so I think recognizing that they're going to need even more of that comforting present, that pressure mm -hmm. or those sensory things or, or things like that. And as a parent, I would love if a teacher would in their in a lesson build in a timer build in those pauses so that it was an all-encompassing lesson yes technically maybe it's a 45 minute thing on the computer but 10 minutes of that was this timer of things that they're doing and because we have a i have a two-year-old in the house right now so mm -hmm. talk about getting distractions away from my daughter it's just not possible yeah. and, and she's easily distracted anyway so um, she really can't start working until after his nap, which isn't her prime time. That's not, or, or when he's napping, that's not her prime time to work. So she's already feeling a little bit tired. Um, and that's my only time to work. Mm -hmm. And so now here that this is when she's supposed to be working and I'm supposed to be working. So getting mom's help at that same time yeah. is impossible. So if there were a lesson that built those things into it, that would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, you could just be all of a sudden she's pausing and now she's going to go down the hallway and do some like lunges or steps. I mean, that's so great for you guys to incorporate that stuff. Um, one last thing I want to say that helps my kids a lot is what we call the burrito roll. And we roll them in tight, 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 tight and in, uh, in blankets um, and just lay down next to the, them in their burritos. And we it's kind of silly, but they it's um, a great calm down technique, I think, for them. Um, and you could build any of that stuff in like, okay, kids, I want you to go get your coziest blanket and I want you to roll yourself up like a burrito and just take a few minutes to breathe, um, and relax before we move on to the next part of the lesson. Um, social emotionally, we talked about all last week on the live stream. That's where we're at. You know, content matters. We want them learning. We want them to love learning because we're not reading anything right now, but we also want them to be emotionally like feeling like they can they can get through the next 17 days which megan says we have 17 days mm -hmm. so <laughs> i think i think that's awesome and megan also said she has a um they have a ptso virtual meeting today so she's going to share so that's awesome megan awesome. we would love it and you know just think about this as parents we're talking as parents but we're talking as parents that are teaching mm -hmm. our kids and things that we're looking at like oh if they just had this and i could just incorporate that my workday would be so much easier. And a lot of parents who are working from home right now are feeling fatigued with these kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're about to ship them off as foreign exchange students next door. Like they're just done. Okay. So <laughs> we got to make sure that they're feeling, they're feeling good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just move in. And some of the things I talked about today, um, what's your chronotype? So what's your productivity time? Um, what's your level of procrastination? Um, that mindful hyper focus, which we talked about, like setting some timers for your kiddos if you have time and and really giving them that mindful hyper focus, right? Um, I love Julia's analogy of like working out. Like if I can just do these 10 more push-ups, I get a break, you know? Um, and then also uh, the last thing is just making sure they have some type of sensory place calming thing um, for that social emotional attachment. I think that's really important. So for the topic number two today, we're going to go ahead and talk about feedback. And Julia is going to kind of take over a lot and I'll kind of comment. Um, but it's a powerful tool for student motivation. So if you're incorporating all of these awesome ideas about how to keep them motivated, that's just during the lesson. Okay. What happens after they submit? Mm -hmm. You know, if they submit, right? Right. We're, we're, first of all, we're trying to get them to submit. <laughs> okay. So yeah. if that's having your lessons incorporate all this other stuff. But what do we do? How do we get them to have feedback, you know, that matters to them and in, in their learning, especially because it's not being graded. So I'm going to throw it to Julia. Well, and you want to talk about what keeps students going. Um, right now, I, for a lot of students, it might feel like they're doing all this work and it's just going into this black hole. Yeah. Right. It's, it's work for work's sake. It's work to log educational time. Um, I know that I know that my daughter has, is feeling a little bit like that. Um, mm -hmm. that like, well, why am I doing this or where is it going? And 
So I think we now need to recognize the power of feedback now more than ever um, on keeping students motivated in the learning process, because it is one of the only personalized ways that you have to communicate with students. Um, there's, a, there's a great article on Edutopia called Three Tips for Humanizing Digital Pedagogy. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. It's that, that, that phrase, humanizing digital instruction. Um, and we have this in the, the resources folder as well. Mm -hmm. But so when we talk about feedback, we know it has a powerful effect size in the classroom. We know that it, it moves students forward. Um, and so now what we, what we have to think about is how do we do this digitally? How do we do this remotely? Mm -hmm. So um, a really good example of the power of this, and it doesn't have to be overdone, um, we had actually requested just a little bit more feedback um, in, in our daughter's situation. And so she got an, an email from her teacher this week referencing something she had turned in. I read it to her and I, I kid you not, her face lit up. Her oh. smile went from like ear to ear. And I'll tell you, there's not a lot of smiling happening in, in the actual learning process. Right. Um, so it was, it was incredible to see that smile. And so we need to remember that the kids aren't feeling us. They're not, they're, we're still this person on the screen. We're still this, this work, we're more work right now. And mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that we're harnessing the, the power of feedback, not just to move them forward on whatever skill you're practicing, but also to keep those relationships to motivate them to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, um, and, and I don't know, Britt, if you've had any experiences with Cami with feedback um, to kind of show that, that power or that lack of power. So, um, you know, she hasn't gotten a lot of feedback from her teacher. Uh, they're not doing any Zoom meetings or Google Meets. Um, her teacher calls her on FaceTime once a week and checks in on her. She lights up when she calls. I mean, she loves having that FaceTime conversation. Um, but really, I'm her motivator right now. And that's kind of hard because I, I wish it was her teacher a little bit more. I mean, I... She only missed one on her math. So she's still getting graded on assessments, not on work, but on the end assessments, which also is a lot of pressure. You know, Julia's get I think her, her daughter's getting graded too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, oh, <laughs> like I actually have to teach this stuff. So she just took her test on, um, what, what, what do we just do? Shapes. And so um, like halves and quarters, and I think we're getting into fractions soon. Um, and so she only missed one out of like 25 questions. And like we, like her and I had like a celebration because mm -hmm. we did that together, which was awesome. But it was like kind of weird. Like it was just like, I'm, I guess I'm the teacher now. Like I just, um, I think the teachers that are doing those whole class WebExes and the Zoom meetings, like I feel like those are so effective. Um, I feel like they need that. They need that verbal feedback and they need to see you, but they also need like feedback on assignments, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think that's super important. I haven't seen a whole, I mean, it's just me giving her like stars on her paper, smiley faces. Like I'm, I'm stamping her work and I'm giving her stickers. Like it's not mm -hmm. coming from an, um, an outside place. Um, and also she, she hit the wall about two weeks ago with a lot of tears of like, I want to see my friends not on a screen anymore. Like mm -hmm. that's her fatigue. Like I want to play with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so not seeing any of her friends from class, I've had to really be like reaching out to her teacher to get numbers of her parents so that I can have those parents and we can kind of schedule like some FaceTimes of like her closest friends to try to figure out how to keep that community going or her little classroom community going. Um, because she is feeling super duper disconnected. So while as a mom, I feel like we're like having like really good triumphant moments. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's weird. It's not like, it sh I feel like it it's not the same. I feel like we're super good as parents at giving them feedback and praise. Right. Especially yeah. for moms. I, I've, I've read that somewhere that the research shows that praise and feedback from mom is like, mm, she's mom. Of course, she's going to say that. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, she has to say I'm brilliant. So, because she's my mom. Yeah. But the teacher, if the teacher says it's great and like, I really like this, this and this about it, the impact is so huge. And the motivation to keep going is, is more, mm -hmm. um, especially on those things that, you know, are going to be challenging for them. That's really where you want to put the time to, into giving them feedback. Now, I know from the teacher perspective, it's like pump the brakes a little bit. Like I am struggling just to get the content out there to them. Right. Which 
I, I totally understand. So it's a matter now of um, figuring out how to find a tool that allows you to provide feedback in a way that um, can be personalized or allows students to see immediately how they're doing on things um, and build that into what you're already spending your time on. And then, you know, I would say aim for feedback at least once a week that's personalized one-on-one -on -one to each kid, whether it's an email or it's, it's an actual live conversation with them. If you take your class of students and you try to do that for five or six kids each day, um, built into your day, then, then you're hitting each one of those kids. And the impact of that is like, just from what I see at home, the impact is way more than anything I could do to motivate her to, to get up and write her next paragraph, right? Right now, our, our biggest struggle at home is getting that writing in and, and getting it down and getting those ideas out and producing a paragraph. Um, the motivation to do that is definitely not there. But when she gets feedback on it from the teacher, like she did in this one, then she's like, okay, now we have another paragraph to do today. And, and I don't see as much like, oh, I'm sure, mom, you know, yeah. yes. Um, so, you know, we talk about, so from the teaching perspective, what can that look like? Um, I, I say there's, there's three ways, right? You can have immediately programmed feedback Mm -hmm. And this is feedback where you have actually, maybe you've built a, a type of quiz into um, Socrative uh, yeah. on that. And then that's a tool where, where kids can go online and do um, a quiz that you've done. And then it can immediately pop up the feedback after they submit each question. And you can be as detailed as you want. So if in yeah. class, you know, you were going over this answer with them um, the next day or later on, um, yeah. you can build that into there so they can read it right as they go. And then what I would say is actually have them do a self-reflection on each of the ones they're missing as they go so that you know they're reading and processing that feedback. Mm -hmm. So that's immediately programmed. So then the kids are aware that like this isn't just some Google form where I'm clicking and I can see I got it right or I got it wrong. The right. teacher is actually the teacher actually knows why I might have missed it. And oh, she read my mind. That's why I thought that answer. And and so that for them feels personalized. Like you've put that energy into helping them understand what, why they're not getting something. Then we have the small group, right? WebEx mm -hmm. is a tool that we all have. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a tool that we can, we know we use it for the, these either whole class meetings or the one-on-ones. Um, but I would encourage uh, teachers to consider small groups. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity. So I've witnessed some- Yeah, and Wendy, Wendy just said that same thing. Yep. There you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, I have witnessed the whole, some of the whole group WebEx is <laughs> I've watched my, my daughter's Zoom meetings um, and they can get, pretty crazy. And it's actually really easy for a kid to get lost, to get um, to fade out, especially if they yeah. mute and like unshow their picture or whatever. Yeah. You don't even know if they're there. Right. And I think, <laughs> and the teacher, if you're trying to get around to each kid in that meeting, which I've watched happen and a kid is missed that you've just gone like three months backwards with that kid. Um, and because they, they feel like you didn't see them or you didn't process their, them being there. So the small group is a way to actually um, yeah. have individualized conversations with kids, but they're, they're around their peers. Um, and you can actually use that to engage them in small group discussion. Um, but you can also have them, if they've submitted, let's say like a piece of writing to you prior, you can actually use those and, and put them up and, and have yes. small group conversations around, hey, what do we notice is really awesome in this paragraph? Like if you were to tell Susie, you know, one thing that, that you thought would make it even more awesome, what would it be? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's another way to harness something you're already doing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then that one on one. Um, conversation. Yeah. Now, here's what I would recommend with the one on one so they don't become this awkward conversation with the teacher because kids sometimes feel a little weird being one on one with their teacher, especially the older they get, right? Um, is actually, I would suggest putting out to them a self reflection sheet um, or some type of guided script where they run the conversation with you, the teacher. So you call and you say, okay, let's start on your sheet and let's move down like these things that you came up with. And these right. things like, what, that was a good idea. Yes. Right. So yeah. now it's student led one-on-one -on -one, instead of this awkward, like teacher led, you know, like we're shining the light down on you. Where were you on the night of blah, 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 which is how I think a lot of students immediately feel. Um, well, I think that's why they, they, did, they disengaged after the first two weeks of this, I think. They were like, I'm not getting talked to. I'm not getting feedback. I'm not getting graded. Peace out. Semester's over. Like, yeah. they don't, they're don't, they not getting it. But if we can get them back, mm -hmm. right, and do yeah. these steps, I think that would really help. And then we need to practice these steps just in case this happens again next year sometimes. 
Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And so I think those are, these are easy ways that don't overwhelm you right mm -hmm. now as the teacher um, to, to get to those students. Like I said, put, pull them into small groups. Mm -hmm. You have five small groups you have to work with over the course of a week, right? Don't try to do them all in one day. You'll be brain dead, yeah. um, but you schedule them that way. Um, or in the one-on-ones, if you're going to do those again, do five or six a day but have the kids pre-script out what they're going to talk to you about. So you send them that plan or that template um, and then, or build in those automatic feedback components with some student self-reflection. If you're doing that um, already programmed type of quiz activity with them. Yeah. And I think having teacher clarity too with them is like, Hey, okay. Like on this, you know, when you said immediately programmed, like this isn't the program giving you feedback. Like mm -hmm. I have typed these into you for, for mm -hmm. you. Like, so I think being that transparent where they're not like, is this a robot talking to me? Like, yeah. you know, like when they're doing online digital things, I, I just throw think your, throw your bitmoji in, right? Throw your bitmoji <laughs> in or throw that. a funny gif or meme. And like, you know what I mean? Like you miss this. Not humorous humorous thing. Thing. Yeah, show that kid that's like, ah, oh, you know, on that gift, right? He may sit and then ask, you know, to type in why. Then they know, oh, my teacher did this for me. Mm -hmm. Sean was saying, she says, I think scheduling small groups would also increase attendance. So, like, increase the motivation for them to get there because they were personally invited, yeah. right? It's like, mm -hmm. and I think that's such a great point. And, it, and it also, she says, it's not obvious that they're not there. Like, it, like oh, I really need to go because there's only, like, five people going to this right now. and. Um, it's my it's my day and I need to to do feedback. Plus, if you do what you were saying um, with a feedback form teacher, you're not having to come up with all the questions mm -hmm. for these kids or come up yeah. with a sample necessarily. If you don't want to, they're coming to you with their self-reflection, which is higher anyways, because mm -hmm. they've had to process all of that and all the learning that they've been doing and then kind of talk to you about it. So they could still even do that in a small group where they each have their own reflection. Absolutely. And they, yep. And they share them out. Yep. And that would be good. Um, and then Suzanne said Flipgrid's really working well for her to give feedback to her students. Um, yeah. Flipgrid is awesome. And Suzanne is doing it with kinders. So like you can do it from kinder all the way up. It's easy to use. I think it's accessible for kids and parents because you can, it's not just a computer thing. It's also an app. So if like technology is an issue and there's multiple kids in a home trying to get on this like one or two computer to do their work, I think just, you know, taking the iPad or the phone and getting into an app, I think is sometimes a little bit help more as it's helpful. Because well, what that you can do, especially with younger, the, the video responses. Um, mm -hmm. I think, and, and I would, I would throw this out there to those like second, third, fourth, I would say I'll be like sixth grade, maybe even on don't yeah. assume your kid can type. Don't assume typing skills. Um, so a lot of teachers, maybe there's those fill in the blank digital PDFs. Those are wonderful and great, but how much longer does it take them to find the T and to find the H and to find that? So I think remembering that, that's what I love about Flipgrid and things like that. Is you can put those video responses. Yeah, um, like you're presenting her little litter bug, right? right? It was like, here's my litter bug and it's blah, blah, blah. And we made it out of a Gatorade bottle. And it's like, she's just narrating her her right. learning basically of what she did. And I made a report. Yeah. And typing a report about it. Yep, for sure. Um, and then you have this really cool uh, article that you're going to link for them. Um, it's 53 ways to check for understanding. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, this, this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, do you have any favorites? Have you read all 53, Julia? I'm putting you on the spot. I know, right? No, you know what? I have scanned them. So I okay. use I use this tool in my um, formative assessment class to help mm -hmm. teachers see that like formative assessments can come in, in a ton of different. Um, oh, I like, I like muddy moment. But, like what frustrates you? Like your muddy moment. Yep. Yeah. So there's, there's some really awesome ones in there. I love the author's analogy. The title of this article is um, dipsticks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes into the, his formative assessment caption with that. But you know, it, that analogy of, yeah, efficient ways to check for understanding. And so, you know, we use that analogy of we're, we're checking the oil in the car. Where mm -hmm. What level is it at? Where are they at? Um, yeah. So I think <clears throat> in this case, or paint, you know, you're, you're yeah. using stick to stir the paint. So, but these 53 methods, um, they capture a lot of what um, Wendy teaches in her creative writing structures class, where mm -hmm. it might be in the form of poetry, it might be in the form of a caption, it might be in the form of some type of visual, a graffiti wall, or a um, different things. And so there's 53 different ways to, to check um, that that 
aren't your typical ways. And this is a great tool for getting kids off the screen. So we go back to a lot of what finding that balance that, that yeah. you guys talked about last week. The, the, these are a ton of great strategies that get kids away from the screen and doing something a little bit more creative that's demonstrating what they have and haven't learned. Well, and like talk show panel, like how fun would that be? Hmm. And like a small group WebEx, you know? Yeah. I mean, you could take some of these ideas and put them into their self-reflection form for the week. And how much more fun would it be to fill out a self-reflection form that has like, okay, what was your muddy moment? What was, what's your illustration? Would you, you know, and then do any of these right. in your small group feedback um, in your WebEx meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, my, my daughter's a comic book. Per I mean, I, she does comic books all the time. It's her thing. I think she loves Captain Underpants. So that's why she does it. But um, yeah, classroom, TED, like little classroom, what's your TED talk? Uh, I love this list. So we're going to definitely have this linked in the um, uh, employee or yeah, in the employee hub under our tips and tricks, there's a resource bank. Okay. And, and in that resource bank, there's a YouTube channel um, live stream folder. And so every episode we've done, this is our fourth one, but every episode we've done, everything's linked. So anything we've talked about or discussed um, based on our research for the talk today, um, we'll, we'll be in there. Um, and we're about reaching our hour. Um, and I think like, is there anything else you have to, you want to comment on Julia? Like, what do you think? No, I think, you know, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different things out there that we, that we can talk about engaging and motivating students. But I think at the end of the day, one of the most motivating things for any of us, I mean, if we think about in work, if I know, if I know for sure my boss is going to read something uh -huh. um, and, and need it and use it, I, I'm definitely engaged in making sure it's a high quality thing. Um, so I think when we talk about feedback, if you're regularly giving them feedback in whatever shape form that is um the kids are going to be motivated to keep doing it first of all because they especially actually i think all the way through high school they hang on every word whether we realize it or not everything that we say that's personalized to them they they really hang on that um so if the more we can weave that in i think the the more engagement um and productivity we're going to have with kids and i think personally inviting them to a webex or a, you know a google you know like a meeting or some type of hangout would be you know, if even if it's a personal invite, not a one on one, but even if it's four or five of them, um, I think they're like maybe more likely to come. Mm -hmm. And then think about also what we talked about at the beginning, just um, having them be motivated with other social emotional things. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like learn when they're the most productive. Right. And having them talk about when, when they feel like they're most productive, giving them a schedule like Julia gave Katie. Um, where you kind of do require them in some way to give you something at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, whether it's a rating of five stars, you know, um, use emojis, use likes, use bitmojis, make it fun. You know, um, you could even say like, hey, at the end of this assignment, post your favorite GIF telling me how you thought this this tutorial went or whatever. And they could post that, you know, try to keep it um in, you know, engaging for them, you know, I, I've seen a lot of teachers, um, you know, telling high school students, like, you know, what would help bring you, what would help engage you? And they're like, well, we, you know, we want to share like what we're doing and we want to share what we're doing personally, but we can't in those big groups. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're saying with the small group, the one-on-one, -on -one, and then also during lessons, giving them those pauses and the timers and that like practical hyper focus, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Like, let's be honest, we got thrown into this in what, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Educators are, I mean, teachers are the best humans in the world because we can just, yep. And now we're remote learning, um, but we didn't know what we were doing. Okay. So I think yeah. as we go through and we start learning, I'm looking at some of the comments and people are like, oh, I didn't know this. I didn't think about this. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, we don't know what's happening. Like we're, as professional growth people, we're trying to research to try to share with you guys, mm -hmm. like, hey, this might work. Try this, you know, because you're out there in the trenches um, and you're trying to help your students. And I know you guys are worried about those kids that aren't showing up. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're wondering how they're doing, how their family's doing, and it's, it's weighing on you. And that is what's part of your fatigue. And I think uh, like giving, you know, you have to let some things go. You have to not be so hard on yourself, right? 
But if you can also incorporate just a few of these little things and just see if it helps motivate the kids to come and really submit. And maybe it'll also motivate you a little bit too. Like, okay, guys, so we're going to pause now and we're all going to go do this, right? And you walk away from your screen and maybe you go do it, you know? Um, it'll help kind of like lighten it, lighten it a little bit. Because I think we're all feeling that we've, like Julia said, we've hit the wall. Yeah. Right? Take some time to see, to give yourself an opportunity and feedback to see their smiles. Yeah. Because that will motivate you. Yeah. And I think that's what most people say. Their favorite time of the 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 week or the day is seeing their students mm -hmm. smile and their faces. Right. Um, and that might be the only time that day that they really feel like they were seen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I am I'm doing my best with my, you know, with my seven, seven year old. But I feel like my third year, three year old doesn't feel seen right now. Mm -hmm. um, he's acting out. He's, you know, definitely. Like, wait, where's my work time? Where's my mom time? Where's my one-on-one -on -one time? Um, it's hard. Families are, ha we're getting tired. We're not, this is a long haul. I think more than we thought it was going to be. Um, and I think all of this um, motivation tips that we gave you guys today and the feedback, I think will help, you know, hopefully reduce that fatigue. Um, if you are feeling fatigued, like we always say at the end, and um, I will always remind you, um, if you're feeling alone or isolated, or if you're feeling like you just need to vent, um, you can reach out to our social media and direct message us. Like we are more than happy to listen to you. Just be like, if one more kid asks me for directions that I've posted here, 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 and here, <laughs> I'm going to lose it. Like, I, that's fine. You can totally message us and we will be like, we totally, we're on, we know I'm so, you know, keep going, keep doing it. Okay. Um, and then um, you can always reach out to me bits of Brit um, and on my uh, direct messaging me and I will listen. Um, I won't always have the answers. I definitely don't have all of the answers at all. Um, but I will be definitely um, an ear for you guys to um, just bounce off ideas. And you can also always email us too. Okay, we have office hours. Julia, when are your office hours? Mondays and Wednesdays from one to two. Okay, and I am on when on Tuesdays at um, 10 a.m. And then I'm obviously here Thursdays at, at 1 p.m. Um, thank you so much, Julia, for thank you. coming on, talking about fatigue and motivation and all different kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think that's going to wrap it up. We're a little bit over our hour. Um, again, if you guys are enjoying these little chats or tips that we're giving, um, don't forget to hit subscribe. Um, that way you guys know when things are coming up or live streams are coming. And then um, don't forget to hit the little um, gray bell at the bottom. You want to gray out that little bell. And that's going to tell you um, when we're going live or when a new video is posted um, to our YouTube channel. There are a few tutorials on our YouTube channel um, that you guys can peruse through, but don't forget to look at our employee hub. We have our screen side chats um, each week that are really just us from our hearts, from our homes, um, you know, just telling you how we're feeling and, and, and trying to give you little tips and tricks um, as we go along as parents, as teachers, as um, instructional specialists, you know, um, but we want you guys to know that we think you are amazing. We can't express to you how much we feel like our teachers have just rocked this transition. And um, you guys are doing an incredible job. We know you miss your classrooms. We know you miss your kids. Um, and just keep, you got 17 days. We can do it, okay? We can push through and make this amazing. Um, and the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna plug, um, Stacy Pascal and I will be doing a webinar on how to finish strong. Um, and that's going to be on, I think oh, I should probably have the date before I just start talking about it. May it's coming up. Hold on. It's going to be on May 12th is the webinar. So it's going to be at 10 AM. It's going to be on the ties, uh, webinar list for the quick links. And then Stacy's going to be on the live stream that Thursday on the 14th to talk more about it. We've got a bunch of ideas, um, lesson wise. We've kind of collaborated. We took the ties and and PD instructional strategies and put them together um, with some activities and lessons for you guys to do with students to um, have fun and help finish the year strong. Okay, so if you are interested in that, put that on your calendar. 
Again, it's going to be May 12th at 10 a.m. for the webinar. We're going to go through our slide deck with all of our materials. And then she's going to come on on the 14th at 1 on the live stream um, to talk through it a little bit more as we finish up the year and try to finish strong in this digital, um, this digital world. So thanks again, you guys, for coming. Um, I appreciate seeing you guys all. Um, I love your guys' feedback. You are so welcome. Um, and I hope you have a great weekend. And I hope that this weekend you take some time to rest because you guys definitely deserve it.